AWS acoustic worship service from wherever you're watching us from in your garden in your car in your kitchen wherever you are in your office we welcome you here here we have worship and praise God amen hi team how are you you're looking so good it is Jesus true and that is where we're here to worship him amen so Jesus we thank you and we pray that you may come along with us as we worship in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can make some moves. Amen. 
You are the one. 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 You are the one.
I read to us from 1 Samuel chapter 30, from verse 1. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burnt it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city 
and there it was burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelite and Abigail the widow of, of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. I want to speak to us on what I have entitled, You Shall Recover All. What I have just read to you is a dramatic story of King David together with a band of about 600 men while they were out in the wilderness and in the city called Ziklag. See, David was at this particular point running for his life because King Saul had attempted, had made such an attempt on his life in order to kill him. And as a result, David found himself out in the wilderness, running from place to place, and had found a home, a temporary home in a city called Ziklag. But while he was doing that, a band of about 400 men initially had joined him. And out of these 400 men, it had grown to a band of about 600 men. And on one of those campaigns out in the wilderness, while they were wrestling and fighting with the enemy, they came back to their home base only to find that while they were away in battle, the enemy had come in and had destroyed the city, had actually burnt it with fire and had taken captive their wives and their daughters. And the Bible tells us that the men were so distressed. They did not know what to do. Now, I know in this season, there are many of us probably who can identify with this story. Maybe you just came back home, uh, maybe from your regular, uh, trying to put food on the table, working out there. And maybe you just came back and found that while you were away, while you were busy trying to fend for yourself, for your family, that the enemy had actually come and had wreaked havoc in your home, had come and destroyed everything that we know. Now we know during this pandemic, people have lost businesses. Some people have lost loved ones. Some people have lost things that were meaningful, their dreams, they have watched their dreams going up in flames. Because while we were busy with our lives, while we were busy trying to put food on the table, while we were busy laboring, the enemy came and wrecked havoc. I want you to see the reaction of this man when they came, led by David, their leader. And they came and the Bible says that David was distressed greatly distressed actually, for the people actually spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. The men were so distressed. David being their leader was also distressed. But they, the men, instead of turning to God, instead of trying to encourage themselves, they actually began talking of stoning David their leader. Isn't that what happens? When things go wrong, we normally look for somebody to blame. Sometimes we blame the system, we blame the government, sometimes we blame maybe your spouse, you blame your children. You always find somebody to blame. When things have gone wrong, we are always looking for somebody to throw stones at. This man was so distressed. This man was in trouble. But the Bible also says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. If there was a time that we needed to encourage and strengthen ourselves in the Lord, it is during this time. In times of disaster, in times of calamity, we need to follow the example of David. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. In fact, the Bible also tells us that this man was so grieved, that this man wept so bitterly, that it was impossible for them to continue weeping because they had no more strength to weep. Let's continue in this story. The Bible says, Then David said to Abiathar, having encouraged himself in the Lord his God, he turns to the priest Abiathar uh, and he tells him, Please bring the effort here to me. And Abiathar brought the effort to David. And verse 8 says that David inquired of the Lord. So notice what David did. While his men are planning to stone him, while his men are weeping and wailing, David encourages himself in the Lord, and then he does the next most important thing. 
he turns to God in prayer. Friends, if there was a time that we needed to seek the face of God, it is during this season. It is in a time of calamity. It is in a time of distress. It is in those times when the enemy has actually wreaked havoc in our lives. And friends, he has actually wreaked havoc, not only in, the, in our own lives, but in the, in the lives of many people all across the world. If there was a time where there has been wailing and crying and bitterness of heart, it has been during this season. Friend, the next important thing, the most important thing you can do in this season is to inquire of the Lord like David. And he inquired of the Lord and he prayed. And the Bible says that God answered him. In fact, David's prayer was simple. It was simple. He said, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him and said, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. What a word. What a word for us. Just like it was for David and those men. The friend, when we pray and call on the name of the Lord by faith, God's answer and his rema word for us, and I believe is a rema word in this season, is that, we shall without fail recover all that we have lost. Have you lost something? Have you lost your joy? Have you lost your peace? Have you lost your dignity? Have you lost material possessions? The Bible tells us, God told David, go, you shall recover all without fail. I believe God is speaking the same word to us in this season. Now, it may look impossible, but I assure you, if God speaks... The words that proceed from his mouth cannot return to him void. You shall recover all. Can you imagine how David must have felt? Having heard God, those words of assurance that you shall recover all. So you know what David did? David went out and pursued the Amalekites. He went out by faith. He went out knowing that he would recover all. Listen. The next step after we have prayed and we have heard from God, we must act by faith. You must do the next most logical thing. Go out by faith. Don't just stay back. Don't just stay back in your distress and in your depression. Go out by faith. Do something. Go out and, 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 and find something to do. Pursue the enemy. David went out knowing that he will recover all. Now, there's a whole passage there that gives us the account of what happens while he pursued the troop. But in verse 18, we are given the result of this pursuit. The Bible says, So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them, David recovered all. It is amazing in these few verses, from the very beginning, God speaks those words to David and he tells him that overtake, pursue this troop because without fail you shall recover all. And then in verse 18, the Bible tells us that David recovered all and then again in verse 19, David recovered all. There was a certain emphasis that is given to the whole process of recovering. That that which God had spoken came to pass so that you and I as a reader of this story do not miss it. David actually recovered all. It is to remind us, you and I, that when God has spoken and when God has given you a word and you act on that word by faith, you too shall recover all that you may have lost. This is a word for people who have lost something in this season. This is a word for people who know what it means to go through loss, to go through tragedy. You shall recover all. But here is the good news, friends. We serve one who is greater than David, the son of David, and his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ on the cross 2,000 years ago, 
he recovered all that the enemy had taken away from us. He recovered all for you and I. Now, this 400 men, 600 in total, who are following David recovered. They recovered the things that the enemy had taken away from them. How much more you and I who are followers, not of David, but the son of David, of Jesus Christ, who is Jesus Christ, we shall recover all. I want to encourage somebody out there. Maybe you've been discouraged, you've been distressed, but Jesus Christ has already gone on before us. And when he hung on that cross and three days later, he was risen, he resurrected from the dead. He recovered our joy, recovered our peace. No wonder Jesus Christ said that I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, we acknowledge that the enemy many times has wreaked havoc in our lives, but we shall recover all. When all is said and done, when this season will have come to an end, it will not be the end of you. It will not be the end of me. It will not be the end of the church. It will not be the end of God's people, but we shall recover all. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for somebody probably who is feeling discouraged. You're feeling down and out. Probably you're wondering, Pastor, you're saying all these things about recovering all. How is it going to be for me? Listen, I may not give you all the details because God's ways are not our ways. But all God asked me to tell you is that you shall recover all. May I just pray for you? Would you just believe with me as we pray to God right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all those dear Father who are hearing and have heard this word and have heard this message. And Lord, I pray for especially those who have lost something. Lord, who probably in the, in, in the journey of life, while they were minding their own business, while they were busy trying to serve you, they came and found that the enemy had, had brought devastation and had wrecked havoc in their homes, in their lives. And they feel that they have lost so much and feel so discouraged and probably even wondering whether they want to go on. I pray for them, Lord. You encouraged your servant, David, when he encouraged himself in you and you gave him a word that he shall recover all. Lord, I pray that you will help your people to find encouragement in you and that, Father, they will walk and live by faith knowing that they shall recover all. So I thank you, Father, and I praise you because you will do it for your people in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every circumstance You are Jaira 
I know who I am. I know what you spoke. I'm already loved more than I can imagine. God is enough. It's enough. I'm already loved. I'm already loved. More than chosen. chosen. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what you spoke. I know what you spoke. Lord 
How much more does it love you? How much more? How much more does it love you? 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 How much more does it love you?